Nestled on the shores of Loch Gill in County Sligo, this is Hazelwood, a place steeped in mystery and ancient folklore. We're in Yeats's country here, the home of that great poet, William Butler Yeats. As I walk through these beautiful woods, I'm going to tell you a little bit of, about the stories that make Hazelwood so special. First, there's the story of the Hazelwood fairies. It's said that these magical beings have lived here for centuries, protecting the forest and its secrets. Interestingly, the fairies in Hazelwood are often depicted with traits closer to English mythology, largely due to the influence of the poet W.B. Yeats. Yeats, with his Anglo-Irish roots, bridged Irish and English folklore, bringing a unique blend of fairy lore to Hazelwood. His works like The Stolen Child portrayed fairies as both tempting and dangerous beings, blending Irish tales with a touch of English literary tradition. The Stolen Child is one of W.B. Yeats's most famous poems and it was written in 1886. In the poem, a child is lured away from the human world by fairies. The fairies promise the child a life free from sorrow and filled with magical beauty. They invite the child to join them in a world of eternal youth and joy, away from the troubles and the pains of human existence. Now obviously the woods get their name from the beautiful old hazel trees here. These are not just any trees. In Irish mythology, hazel trees are considered sources of wisdom and knowledge. The most famous tale involves the Salmon of Knowledge, which gained its wisdom by eating the hazelnuts that fell into the Well of Wisdom from the nine sacred hazel trees. These nuts were said to contain all the knowledge of the world, making the hazel tree a powerful symbol of enlightenment and inspiration. One of the most famous stories from Hazelwood is about the mystical creature known as the Daur Hu. This is a legendary water spirit, part dog, some say part dog and part otter, others say it's like a king otter. And it's said to haunt the waters of Loch Gill here. According to the legend, the Daur Hu is fiercely protective of its territory and it's believed to guard hidden treasures beneath the lake's surface. There's an old story about how a local woman was attacked by the Daur Hu while she was washing her clothes by the lake. Her husband, upon hearing her cries, rushed to help her and after a fierce battle with the creature, managed to slay it. But the story isn't finished there because the legend has it that the Daur, as the Daur Hu died, its mate emerged from the depths and that sparked even more fears among the locals of this vengeful creature. Hazelwood is also linked to the classic epic tale of Dermot and Gráinne. Dermot Uhrúnia, one of the Fianna warriors, and Gráinne, the daughter of the High King, Cormac MacArth, they are central figures in one of Ireland's greatest love stories. Gráinne, you see, was due to marry the ageing hero Fionn McCool. Now, on the night of her wedding feast to Fionn, Gráinne is said to have cast a spell, or a geish, to compel Dermot to run away with her. Their flight took them across Ireland, and one of their many hiding places was said to be here, in Hazelwood. And my goodness, you can really feel the romanticism here. Here among the ancient trees and the hidden paths, they found refuge and solitude. The dense woods and the proximity to Loch Gill provided a perfect hiding spot for the lovers and that evaded the relentless pursuit of Fionn and his warriors. Perhaps the most haunting legend, or certainly what's perceived as the most haunting legend of Hazelwood, is that of the Banshee. Now, we see Banshees all over the country. There's one here. This ghostly figure is said to appear here on misty nights, and she wails a sorrowful song that chills the bones of anyone who hears it. The Banshee, that means the fairy woman in Irish, she is a female spirit whose mournful cry foretells the death of a family member. 
Now she's normally associated with ancient Irish families, in particular families I always grew up understanding that it was any family had, who had O or Mock in their name. So unlike the malevolent spirits of some folklore, the Banshee is actually seen as a benevolent figure, even though she can be seen as a bit spooky, because she mourns the imminent loss and she tries to ease the passage of the soul to the afterlife. These woods here span almost 70 acres and they're filled with winding paths and ancient trees. The woods as we know them today were planted in the 18th century by the Wynne family who owned this estate. Their efforts transformed the area into a sanctuary of natural beauty and mystery, blending seamlessly with the folklore that envelops it. It's very easy to see why these woods inspire so many stories and poems. The ancient trees, the serene lake and the quiet paths all weave together to create a sense of timeless magic. My next sleep story is about the classic love story of Jeremid and Gráinne that I mentioned, who once hid here in these beautiful woods. So don't forget to come and listen and subscribe on my YouTube channel, The Sleepy Scholar. Tor Ara Agaslan live.